Hey guys, my name is Jason from Southern Land, and today we are butchering chickens. And today we're gonna butcher 30 meat chickens. So we're supposed to have some friends come over to help us out and just make a day of it. After raising these chickens in chicken tractors, moving them every single day for the last 10 weeks, letting them eat the bugs, the grass, and getting plenty of sunshine, today is their one bad day. And these Cornish cross chickens are bred, they are meant to eat, and they are meant to be put in our freezer. And ice, ice is a big part of butchering day. Today, I think it's supposed to be not as hot, so I picked up eight bags of ice, and we're gonna put these bags of ice in, in all of these uh, ice chests, and then we're also gonna fill them up with water. So for this amount of bags of ice, it's about 30 bucks. This is something about a cup of vinegar into this ice chest full of ice and water and this is going to be the vinegar rinse and this is where the bird is first going to go right after it's been eviscerated it's going to get a dunk in here for about half a minute to about a minute after the vinegar bath we stick it in the pink bath and this one is just filled with ice and water uh, maybe I'll put a splash of vinegar in here and the vinegar is just to kind of keep everything clean and then it will rest in here until it's done draining its blood and that's why we call it the pink bath so it, the water turns pink. It's just kind of until the bird rests and, and drains probably until we're finished with or until it gets full and then we'll move it over here to the final resting place. We're going to put take out um, the bags and put it in with ice and water and this is where it just the bird reaches its cool temperature below 40 degrees before we bag it um, and this is just kind of like its final resting place. <laughs> We got a little bit of soap in here, 150 degrees. This loosens up the feathers. Look, I thought it was a big bird when you pulled it out. No matter how t how many times that you've, you've done this before, which is I think our 11th, 12th time, uh, it, it always takes a little bit of time to like kind of work out the kinks in the beginning. Okay, the first thing that I like to do on the evisceration table is remove the head. And you never want to saw through bone, so you just want to slice through some of the tendons here. Just very gently. I'm not... I'm not pushing. I'm just slicing through a little bit of the meat and the tendons. Sometimes the head can be just like snapped off. There we go. We don't save the heads. You can save them for broth, but we, we don't. Then the next thing that I do is remove the neck. So I will find the trachea and the esophagus. I kind of just like to pull it away. You can use your knife. Remember the key is very, very, very sharp knives. So I'm just right now cutting away the skin from the neck. It helps to have a very plump bird. <laughs> you have like a, a bony back bird. He's just gonna slip and slide all over the place. Okay, so that's the skin. We don't save the skin on the neck, but now everyone has a different way of removing the neck. What I like to do is just kind of chomp down with my knife. It is going to dull your knife a little bit, so if you want to have a designated knife for the neck chomping, you can. Um, some people like to just twist and snap it off, um, but I like to just chomp down. We save our necks, so what I will have is a bag here for one for the necks, 
one for the hearts and liver and one for the feet. So right at the joint between the, the foot and the leg, there's a joint and you can see that there's going to be these two knuckles that go like this. And you never want to saw through bone with your knives. Um, so what I'm doing is just going to slice open the skin. I'm not pushing very hard. And you can see that white thing there, that's a tendon. You're just going to slice it all the way around and you can hear it loosening already. So with the breast side up, I like to just crack it like that. You can see there's no sharp bones here exposed and that's going to be great for bagging the birds later. Um, never saw through bone, just saw through the skin. And so the foot comes off very nicely. Now I like when we dunk the feet all the way into the boiling water because the skin comes off and that makes for great and easier bone broth. Okay, with your bird breast side up, I like to pinch right between this um, breastbone and the vent. So just make a pinch. I like to do mine closer to the breastbone and then just make a saw, your, make a slice. You're not gonna cut too deep, so don't do it hard. You're not pushing hard. You should have a very, very sharp knife. You're just going to make a couple slits. And once you're into this, once you get into the skin, you're gonna use your fingers to kind of open the rest to pull out. Now, hopefully you withheld food for the 24 hours, so that way there's not poop coming out of the vent. Stick your hand right into the hole and start loosening the membranes that are all around. So you're gonna take your hand and go right around the rib cage like that and just break apart all of the, the membranes. So I like to pull from here. You wanna be careful for the bile sac, which I will show you when I pull it out. You don't wanna pop that. So see how I'm pulling this? This is attached to the esophagus. It's gonna come right out. So see, this is the crop and the esophagus and it came sliding right out. There was nothing in this chicken's crop here, so there's no grass. Sometimes you'll see a little bit of grass. Some people save this. This is this is a very good uh, delicacy. You can eat, cut this open and take remove the rocks and the grass that's inside and save the muscle meat and eat that. Um, we're not saving it this time. So now you're just gonna reach your hand inside and continue pulling out the organs. So here we have the heart and then we will have the bile sac which is a nice little green pouch in here you don't want to pop that because it's going to make your meat very bitter and i'm just gonna i'm not popping anything you just want to cut away some of the membranes here if you do pop the bile sac it's okay you can just wash it but be sure to wash it really good because it'll make your meat a little bit bitter this is the heart and I wanna remove the bile sac as carefully as I can. If that means getting rid of some of the liver, that's okay. I just wanna be careful not to pop it. Sometimes it's easier than others. So now you're gonna continue pulling out the innards. If your chicken starts pooping, it's okay. Um, just be sure to wash your table. Um, I'm going to cut around that area, the vent area, and just cut that part out. And it falls right into your bucket. So you can see the lungs are right attached to the backbone there. So you're gonna use your hand in a scooping motion and just scoop them right out. There's one, use the other hand. And there's the other one. And then you want to go back and make sure that, that the crop and the esophagus are fully removed because those aren't fun to find in a chicken when you're cooking it. Second to last thing you want to do is remove this oil gland because that's also going to be bitter. So I just hold the tail down and just scoop it out with my knife. There we go. We always do quality control again right before we bag it. So we'll, we'll double check for more feathers at that point. So now I'm just gonna give this guy a rinse and then put him into our vinegar rinse and then move him over to the pink bath. And then we're ready for the next bird.
Mike. What's happening? <laughs> you come to help us? Sure, yep. <laughs> Thanks for having us out. If you guys don't know Mike, Mike has an awesome YouTube channel. What's your YouTube channel name? The Fit Farmer. Fit Farmer. Yeah. Check him out. Got one. Have you butchered chickens before? I have, but it's been it's been a number of years since I've done it, and uh, we are getting ready to process our first batch on our homestead uh, here coming up in about two weeks. So nice. pretty exciting. So I want to come out here and help you out as well as <laughs> refamiliarize myself and my wife too yes. with uh, with the process. Yes, I think the more that you can be around this, I think the better. Because yeah. if you're not doing something on a regular basis, you just naturally get rusty at it, man. Yes, no matter how many times you've done this, it takes time to get that rhythm going. Yeah. What I've learned. Yeah, put their backs. Backs? Oh, that, this way. Yeah, put their backs in the back. Yeah, there you go, like that. Right. And then you want to pull their head out. So you're looking for about right there? Yeah, just above your area. And then you want to move the feathers. Okay, move the feathers kind of like that. Yeah, you don't want to saw through the feathers. Okay, so I need more of the feathers away. Yeah, you want the skin. I try to use my thumb and just kind of move it out of the way. Right there? Yeah. Okay, right here and then bam. And then just slice, yeah. Okay. I mean, you could, after you slice it, just hold the head still. Okay. What are you doing, Penelope? Getting this chicken. I'm just practicing because this one is halfway cooked. All right. You're practicing on that one? Yeah. All right, good job. How's that look? I think it looks good. Oops. Gotta grab it. Got a few feathers still on there. Yeah, that's Just typical. That's normal. I need a job. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Alright, Lacey's here too. Here I am. Are you used to doing this? Actually, this is probably my first time <laughs> doing this. You know, yeah. I'm a little gaggy here and there, <laughs> but I'm making it through. Yeah. When you get them like this, you want to put your hand, their hand, your hand, on their back, and that should calm them down a little bit better. We got three more guys, three more to do. Three more chickens? That's it. That's it, home stretch. Looks good, everyone's doing a good job. Yeah, chickens. We got enough ice? Yeah, we have plenty of ice. How do you like that plucker? I love it. <laughs> definitely will use this. <laughs> <laughs> so I definitely wanna make sure to keep your head yeah, you back. You gotta watch that, you gotta watch that. You don't want All right, this is the last one. What time are we at? 12.30. We did our first one at 8.30. After um, having a good conversation, uh, hanging out for a bit, taking our time, you know, not, not, nothing stressful. Wait, is this the heart? It's the last one, Mike. Last one. <laughs> got the last one here. Got the last one here. You got all the cameras on you. Yeah. <laughs> Make it a good one. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> oh, Explosions <laughs> like a heartbeat. Yeah, my mind's keen. Rushes of emotion. Hold that up. That's a little small. That's a little cute one. <laughs> this one's cute. <laughs> How are you doing, Penelope? Good. You all right? The sweetness and adventure. Without adventure. TV's got your mind stuck on good reality. Good job, Penelope. Awesome. And this is the final resting place and all the birds. <laughs> Some people dump the blood in their garden. Some people just dump it in their compost. There's nothing right or wrong about it. It's just we're dumping it in our compost. So I hope to grow more compost this year. And then also the feathers, we're going to dump that in there. 
And then I'll come back in here and uh, cover that up with some wood chips. Lorraine didn't like the, the blood in the garden too much. I can see that. <laughs> I you can know. see that. All right, so we gave this a good wash, and now we filled it up with clean water. This needs to get to about 180 degrees so we can start bagging this. We're going to have lunch first, and then we're going to start bagging. There we go. I'm ready for some lunch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is the quality control. Picking out pin feathers, like that one, and then just checking if the oil gland is removed, checking to see if the lungs are removed. The esophagus, and that's it, and then we're letting it dry. All right, so we're using the straw method on taking the air out of these chickens. We put them in these bags, and then you want to take out all, all the air out as much as you can, kind of like hold it in there tight. We use a stainless steel straw, but you could pretty much just use any kind of straw. You stick it in there, the top. Then you give it a good twist and you want to put the zip tie just in the, just tight enough so that way it holds the straw in place and then you want to count to about five and submerge the whole chicken pull it out and all the air came out of it take the straw out and then you tighten it with the zip tie and there you go just like a store-bought grocery store chicken. Thank you so much, man. Oh, it was I awesome. I appreciate it. My pleasure, my pleasure. <laughs> you Glad fun? to be here. I did, I did. <laughs> and it was, uh, thank you for letting us come out here and help you out. Yeah, I think all the practice we could get is better. Yeah, it's that's better. right. <laughs> that's right. And besides, you got at least, what, uh, 30 chicken dinners there? Yeah, yeah, that, that's the good, that's the good, that's the good news. There you go. <laughs> Alright, so we just cleaned up all the tools and stuff for the chicken butchering and processing. I'm heating up some more water. This is the water left over from the heating up or shrink wrapping the bags. And we have gut buckets. Fun, fun. Normally, with the gut bucket, we would just throw it away, bag it up, throw it away. Don't really want to deal with it. Uh, but since we have the pigs, I'm going to try something. I'm going to cook them. How far we've come in our homesteading journey where we're cooking in chicken innards for two pigs. I think we're realizing how gross, <laughs> how gross farming is. We have to do some gross things. It's just, it's just part of the deal. You know, uh, it's not always, um, Perfect. We got some goodies here. Some goodies. Smells good. They smell it. They're like, <laughs> they're drooling. Nothing's going to waste here. Compost, feed the pigs, and we're making bacon. <laughs> 